Greetings and welcome back to the channel. This video is special. One year after my ankle fusion surgery, I will be updating you about my recovery. Please understand that discussing this is still a bit tough for me, but I think it could help and inspire others going through similar stuff. I want to take a moment to express my deepest gratitude to all of you following this series of videos. Your support throughout this has been incredible. Your comments, questions, suggestions, interesting discussions, and encouragement messages have been truly a source of inspiration and motivation for me and many others. Thank you for the bottom of my heart. Now, many of you requested a more detailed history and the latest updates, so this is the video. It's a bit longer, but I hope the chapters can help you to navigate to the part you may be more interested in. Several years back, I experienced a mountain climbing accident that resulted in a fracture to my left ankle with serious damage to both the tibia and fibula. I underwent many surgeries. The recovery process was hard and prolonged, marked by severe pain and trauma. Circumstances prevented me from completing my physiotherapy plan properly, and the aftermath included permanent effects, such as chronic pain and limited mobility. These limitations prevented me from running, jumping or stand up for extended periods and in the day after I could barely touch my foot to the ground due to the pain and I frequently had to use anti-inflammatory and pain relief medications. Over time these effects together with a turbulent professional life gradually steer me toward a more sedentary lifestyle. Years later, I decided to become more active and address my pain issues. I started swimming regularly and later rediscovered my passion for cycling and mountain biking. Eventually, I was able to consult with an orthopedist expert in foot and ankle. The diagnosis post-traumatic osteoarthritis of the upper ankle. After discussing the treatment options, like ankle replacement or fusion, we decided on fusion. The ankle fusion could solve my chronic pain. However, as the doctor emphasized, it comes at a high price. I would need to endure a challenging initial period and commit time and effort to a long recovery process. Moreover, Success is not guaranteed, and there are other risks associated with the surgery. The surgery was scheduled with several months in advance, giving me plenty of time to prepare myself in all aspects. I try to be as physically fit as possible and to maintain a healthy diet. I communicated with my workplace and made arrangements to be out for a short period and work from home later on. I made some preparations at home, especially in my room. With the date approaching, I did my best to mentally prepare myself and my family for what was to come. Conditions like severe arthritis compromise the ankle joint, leading to persistent pain and decreased mobility. Ankle fusion surgery is a major procedure that involves fusing the ankle and the foot bones together to address debilitated ankle joint issues. During the surgery, the surgeon carefully removes cartilage, 
aligns the bones in the optimal position and secure them using screws, plates or other fixation devices. Over time, the fused bones heal together, creating a rigid connection and eliminate the pain associated with bone-on-bone -bone contact and inflammation. Although this procedure limits the range of motion, it transforms the ankle into a stable platform offering a long-term solution. Arthroscopic ankle arthrodesis is a minimally invasive approach. It involves small incisions, a camera, and specialized instruments, reducing scarring and tissue damage. The benefits include potentially easier recovery and less post-operative pain. In my case, I had a tibiotalar arthroscopic arthrodesis. I had general anesthesia and the surgery lasted around two hours. The doctor reported that all three screws show a secure hold ensuring the stability and there was no mobility in the upper ankle, indicating a positive outcome. After the surgery, I was moved to the recovery room where a dedicated team monitored my recovery from anesthesia. Once I was ready, I was transferred to a designated room, spending the next two nights under the care of the hospital staff. Family visits were welcome, offering emotional support and a comforting presence. Those were long nights with time crawling by at slow pace. I didn't get a whole lot of sleep with some discomfort and pain. The days, however, were quite busy. During this period, the medical staff offered essential education on post-surgery care, covering instructions on changing dressings, preventing infections, managing pain and swelling. They offered valuable advice on preventing blood clots, including the utilization of anticoagulant medication. They also offered guidance on using and adjusting the vacopad boot, and they provided me crutches and practical instructions on how to walk with them. Overall, the post-surgery phase was marked by attentive care, instructive sessions and a supportive environment. It was a great start for my recovery journey. The initial recovery period was the hardest, not just physically but also mentally. Enduring post-surgical pain, the dependence on others and concerns about potential complications defined this period. There were some ups and downs. In the first days I experienced some disorientation, difficulty to concentrate and other effects, possibly due to the anesthesia, the medications and lack of sleep. I had to constantly manage the swelling using some pillows to elevate the leg. My family provided substantial support during this phase and I was fortunate to have a such skilled medical team. So I focused on keep it up, being patient and embrace the idea that there will be both negative and positive changes. I also looked for inspiration, connecting to others that were going through the same thing and I began physiotherapy sessions early on, initially only massages and exercise for other body parts. And as my health and strain improved, I attended more frequent sessions and adhered to the exercise routine. After three months, I had a follow-up appointment with the doctor. With new x-rays and a CT scan, the successful fusion of the bones was confirmed. Then I could gradually increase weight-bearing walking with the vacuped boot and crutches.
Some weeks later, I reached the point where I could discontinue using both the boot and the crutches. And I finally managed to cycle using both legs. Pedaling felt much easier in comparison to walking. And it proved to be an excellent exercise for my rehabilitation. first rides, it became clear that not only my strength was much lower, but also my aerobic capacity. It was challenging, but I felt great being back on the bike. Looking after mental health was really important during this period. Guided meditations, self-motivation, and having a strong support helped me much. But also including some distractions and small pleasures to bring light into my days. The pain and swelling had gradually eased off and eventually disappeared. The physiotherapy and keeping myself active really made a difference. I could walk almost perfectly using rocker bottom shoes for additional comfort and support. The doctor and the physiotherapist reminded me uh, to be cautious with the other foot joints while continuing strengthening the leg with exercises, walking and cycling activities. After exercising, foot massages and elevating the leg help with the relaxation and preventing the swelling. I noticed significant progress and I felt I was almost there, but I knew a bit more effort would be needed to fully recover. Physiotherapy played a pivotal role in my recovery, promoting physical healing, restoring mobility and enhancing overall well-being. My rehabilitation program intensified from the sixth month, involving one-hour sessions at the physio center gym or at home three or four times per week, with emphasis on enhancing health and balance. I could walk without pain and with almost no limping but lacked the strength for extended walks, needing time to adjust to new limits of my ankle movement. To make walking part of my routine, I have challenged myself to walk for at least 30 minutes per day. For 30 days! After just a few days, I noticed improvements in my walking ability, leg strength and overall mobility. The rocker bottle shoes really helped. And after this challenge, I decided to keep doing walking activities, not daily, but with some frequency. Cycling also played an important role in my rehab. It's a low impact activity that I love to do and it contributed improving my strength, mobility and the mental well-being. The fusion has likely altered the way I can move and position my foot on the pedal. However, I adapt to this change quickly. On the positive side, I'm now able to stand up on ready or attack position for much longer without the fatigue and pain that have plagued me before this procedure. I haven't changed my mountain bike setup, but had minor adjustments to my position. For example, I can drop my heels as much as before, but it's not a major issue. On my gravel bike I was using look clipless pedals, it was a bit challenging to unclip during my first rides post-fusion. Over time, my mobility improved and this process became easier. Also, I experienced some discomfort with my road bike shoes on longer rides, so I switched to mountain bike shoes and Shimano pedals, and it felt much more comfortable and easier to unclip. 
and I had a fantastic summer. now marking the one year of my ankle fusion surgery. This road to recovery felt like an endurance test. There were moments when the finish line seemed too far away and I wonder if I would ever get there. But here we are. Concluding my formal rehabilitation program, the physiotherapists highlighted the progress and the improvements in my mobility. She advised me to continue exercising regularly as a preventive measure for the future and general well-being. And I just have received very positive feedback from the doctor. He expressed satisfaction with the current positioning of my foot, the mobility of its other joints, and the overall quality of my walking. Thanks to a capable medical team, the support from my family and friends, and all the dedication and effort put into the entire recovery process, we have reached this outcome. According to my doctor, this timeline is considered normal, though it can obviously vary from case to case. It's important to understand that each case is unique and each individual is also unique. So the possibilities, the outcomes and the recovery times may vary. These days, my leg and the other foot joints are stronger. My balance has also improved. I can now walk perfectly for longer periods and cover greater distances. Simply by observing me walking, no one would notice any difference or be able to guess which leg I had a fused ankle. I have no problem climbing up or down stairs, but I find it easier going up than down, and I prefer stairs than ramps. Sometimes my foot cannot follow the ramp angle, so I have uh, to bend the knee a little bit to compensate, and again I found going down trickier. Anyway, I'm learning to adapt to myself. Nowadays I can hit harder and steeper mountain biking trails, no issues up or downhill. I feel more confident as my ankle is more stable and I will have no pain in the next day. understand my new limitations and I can adjust to them. I can extend my rides for longer durations and cover greater distances, explore new routes and enjoy endurance journeys. My cycling power output is still not on the same level as before the surgery. It's improving slowly and I expect to get there soon. Other health and fitness metrics have improved, possibly due to the combination and diversification of activities I'm doing nowadays. 
Also, the recovery times needed between activities is now much shorter. This one-year mark is not just the celebration of overcoming a condition, but it's also the beginning of a new chapter focused on sustained well-being and a proactive approach to health. Thank you for your support and for joining me in this journey. Too many more moments on the road ahead.